Welcome to this online Bloom and Wild flower tutorial. I'm Harriet Parry, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make this very festive um, Christmas urn arrangement um, using chicken wire. And chicken wire inside the vase is a really great way to make your flower arrangements that little bit more sculptural, and I guess a little bit more considered. Um, so yeah, without further ado, um, the next stage is I'm gonna show you all of the tools that you need to create this beautiful piece. So this is everything you'll need for your Christmas table center. First of all, you'll need your flowers, of course. I'm using the Lola Bouquet from Bloom and Wild. Um, it's got some lovely kind of beautiful eucalyptus here, great shapes for this sort of quite sculptural chicken wire arrangement. Um, you'll need some chicken wire, which I've pre-cut here. You'll need your lovely little urn. You might need some tape to secure a chicken wire, depending on how sort of secure your chicken wire is in your vase or urn. And you'll need water. This lovely little gold uh, watering can to fill our urn with water. And of course, floristry scissors. So, the first thing we'll do, I'm just gonna pop these to one side, is we're going to put our chicken wire in our urn. So how I sort of like to measure my chicken wire, this is a useful little tip, is I make the chicken wire a little bit bigger than the actual bar's rim, and it's double the diameter, if that makes sense. So you can see it's a little bit bigger than the actual vase neck, and it's double the diameter. And what I do is, it's kind of making a sort of little cushion, because your chicken wire is going to keep your stems in place. So what I do is bend the spiky bits, these are quite spiky, so just, just be careful. Bend the spiky bits in, and so sort of just almost wrap the wire round so you don't get, so they're not sticking up and you don't hurt yourself. Okay. So I'll do that first, like this. Okay, so you're kind of, you can see I'm making sort of this sort of loose cushion. And then I just sort of fold in the sides like this. Okay. And then so it's sort of, you're making this sort of like padded sort of cushion. I'm just gonna sort of spread it out a little bit. And then that should just fit. Show you again. So it's a little bit like this. I'm just sort of teasing it out so you've got some space. You don't want it too cramped because your stems won't be able to go in. I'm just gonna pop it in your urn like so. So it fits in like this. And again, I'm just gonna stretch out some of the holes I'm using quite chicken wire with quite a small hole cause I, holes because I find that a lot easier because um, the stems really stay secure. And I've also got chicken wire at the top and chicken wire at the bottom because of that cushion shape. So your stems go through the top and through the bottom so they're doubly secured. And if that chicken wire was very loose, I might pop a bit of tape across the top. This is waterproof floristry tape, but I don't think we're gonna need it, but I'll just show you anyway. So yeah, I'd sort of just pop a bit of tape across like this, but try not to use too much tape because again, it takes away the space for your stems. But I don't think we need that, so I'm gonna save that tape for another day, because that's nice and secure. And then I'm just gonna fill it with clean water and make sure your urn's obviously clean as well. There we go. Gonna fill it about halfway, so I make sure all of my stems are in the water. There we go. Okay, now let's get our flowers. So you have filler flowers and focal flowers and in between sort of flowers. So I'm going to first of all, sort of create a base with my foliage. And like I mentioned here, I've got this lovely eucalyptus, which has a great sort of structure. And this is going to be, and I'll just bring the one I made earlier. It's sort of quite wild and sort of quite sculptural. I've sort of almost designed it sort of like going across this way. So, this is perfect. So I'm gonna just cut a few stems. I'm not gonna to put too much in. And again, you want to cut your stems at a 45 degree angle and take off any of the leaves that are gonna be below the waterline. And then I'm just gonna pop it in. And you're working again in a crisscross fashion, sort of radiating from the center. So it's got this really lovely sort of wild, sort of rustic looking feel. Okay, so I'm gonna put a few of these in. 
I'm going to keep some short for interest, for texture, and then later, as I build up my arrangement, I might add a longer stem, a whoosh, to add interest and sort of extra shape. So I'm going to put a few shorter stems. Okay. And this is sort of going to be, when before you start arranging, decide whether you want to have it um, with its back against the wall, which you could do a front-facing arrangement, or on a table, with, which would be 360. So I've also got some tutorials on Bloom Wilds IGTV and YouTube, which you can get some de more detailed tips over there. So do check those out. Okay, so I'm just, this is the first stage, I'm just gonna do my foliage, a few shorter bits and a few longer bits, again, radiating from the center. And the chicken wire is just holding this in place. Okay, so I haven't completely filled my arrangement completely with foliage yet. I've, I can still see a bit of the chicken wire at the top because we've also got to leave room for all of, all of these flowers. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna add a couple of sprigs of this wax flower, but I'm also going to use this wax flower at the end to add um, some little dancing bits sort of coming off over the arrangement, again, to add that sort of whimsical, festive, wild feel. So this is just sort of like an extra filler. It's a filler, but also a finishing touch, really. And again, with these arrangements, the chicken wire is so great because you can sort of almost, as long as they're in water, get really interesting angles that you wouldn't in a, in a vase without any sort of um, structure in place. I'll just add a little bit. Think about your heights and textures. So some low around the neck of the vase and some really high. And if you're gonna do a 360, bring your eye all the way around. So you want to try and have some of the same textures on one side, on the opposite side, and then the opposite side again. Working in your odd numbers and your triangles, which is always something to have in the back of your mind when you're arranging, because it's sort of uneven and nature is uneven. It's not too symmetrical. Okay, we'll have a high bit of this. Okay, so that's our first little structure. Oh, and this wax flower has a really lemony, lemony feel. And with the eucalyptus, that's a really great combo. Okay, next I'm gonna add my roses because these are my main focal flower. And then I'm going to sort of dress my other smaller flowers around these focal flowers. And this is a 360. So I'm going to sort of, I'm gonna do a couple in clusters and a couple sort of singular, but again, Make it quite sort of organic and natural. Really, really sort of use this chicken wire. Okay, so you can sort of see I've got some height here. It's coming down on the other side. It's almost like a wave. Right, next, what should I add next? Hmm, I think I'm gonna add my Alstroemeria. And also follow each stem, that's got a nice kink, so maybe I'll use that. Let each flower, you know, let each flower have its, have its moment of glory. Right, I'm gonna move on to the next one, the Sweet William. It's got a nice round shape as well, so again, I'm gonna dot these within the gaps. just building and building and building really and again the chicken wire just allows you to create shapes that you wouldn't in other, in other arrangements there's a lot of sort of natural freedom if that makes sense constant spry this is quite constant spry if you don't um, know anything about constant spry give her a google um, yeah she always said leave room for the butterflies and again the chicken wire allows um, you know the butterflies to dance through the flowers it's one of my favorite quotes Onto the Hypericum. This gives the Hypericum berries give it a really festive feel. I'm just going to go back to my wax flower and just give it a bit of a whoosh on one side. Oh, I've also got some sticks as well that you maybe you could go out, out into your garden and pick up some wintry sticks. That's always a, a great little detail. If you're going to have this on your um, table, you don't want to have 
<laughs> you don't want to poke any of your guests in the eye. Um, <laughs> so you might want to keep them a little bit shorter. And normally I'd say if this was on a table, you wouldn't want it too high, but you can still see through, through these branches. They're just little touches for people to chat. Okay, let's have a look. Ooh, I like that bit there. Right, one more bit of white stick. Okay, I think that's our festive Christmas urn arrangement in chicken wire finished. Et voila. So I really hope you enjoyed our festive urn arrangement demo. Um, also, I did want to say chicken wire is so great because it's reusable, so it's really good for the environment and you can make, continue making more and more and more and more urn arrangements. And on that note, do send in any pictures of the urn arrangements that you do make because we love, love, love seeing your creations. So yeah, that's all from me. I just want to say um, Merry Christmas and um, I'll see you soon on the next flower tutorial. See ya, bye.